All right, good evening, good afternoon. Let's all stand and sing this song together. Good evening, church. Good to be with you. So um, it's so exciting to be together for baptisms, and there's a lot of reasons why, um, but one of the reasons that I get excited about is that it's one of the things that connects us to the body of believers across time and space. 
Baptism is one of the things that we have been doing as followers of Jesus since there was, you know, well, Jesus incarnate anyway. And, uh, you know, believers in the first century didn't have a lot of the things we have. They didn't have guitars. Um, they didn't have nice lights. They didn't even have polyester for T-shirts. They didn't have any of that. But they did have baptism. And for all of that time, it has been a way that people have expressed that, yes, I want to be a follower of Jesus. And so it's a very, very exciting thing that we come together around today, not just around the people who are getting baptized, but around all the people through all of time who have chosen to be baptized, who have said, we are followers of Jesus. Amen? I want to just uh, read very quickly from Colossians chapter 2. You see some of these t-shirts here that say alive, and the people who are getting baptized today and a couple of us who are involved with it as well are wearing these. And it comes, um, the, the inspiration for that came from Colossians chapter 2. Um, I'm going to read 12, starting at verse 12. Having been buried with Jesus in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. That's what we are celebrating today. We are celebrating people who have made a choice to follow Jesus and are now going to live forever with him. People who have chosen to be alive instead of dead. And that is something to celebrate. So, Let's do some more celebrating uh, of our Lord who makes that possible by singing together. Are we standing back up? Let's stand back up. All right, let's sing about Christ, our cornerstone. Savior's love. 
times our God is good and during the bad times our God is faithful so let's sing about that I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up so I lay my head and I will sing of the goodness of God. You guys sound beautiful. You sing. Jesus instituted two ordinances or spiritual practices, special practices also, uh, in the early church. Those are baptism and the Lord's Supper and uh, communion. And these are like living pictures. So if you imagine um, baptism is 
the entrance into God's family. So again, deeper spiritual realities are being pictured here. And then communion is the ongoing life together that we have in Christ that we celebrate. And the foundation of both of these is the perfect life, the sacrificial death, the glorious resurrection of Jesus. And so baptize simply means to immerse or to submerge or to dip like a, a submarine into water, or it was used in the first century of clothing being dipped into dye. And so how many of you have tie-dyed a t-shirt? So when you place the shirt into the solution, it takes on the colors of the solution, right? And so the word baptism is used primarily in two ways in the New Testament. The first is spirit baptism, where at the moment of saving faith in Jesus, when we turn from sin, trust in Jesus, he immerses us or places us into his family. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we were all baptized or immersed into one body, the body of Christ. Whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, so regardless of our position, we were all made to drink of one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Galatians 3, 26 and 7 says that we are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And then he says, for all of us who were baptized or immersed into Christ have been clothed with Christ. So it's as though at the moment Jesus rescued you, he took off your sin clothes and put on his righteous life clothes on you. And so that's the beauty. At that very moment, we began to take on the colors of Jesus. We began to have the life of Jesus flowing through us to others. Ephesians 2 says that we used to be dead in sin, and now we're alive in Christ. The second primary way that baptize is used, or baptism, of, is water baptism. So after a follower of Jesus would make that decision to trust him and follow him, they would soon afterward be baptized by a church leader into water. Why would they do that? To show that they were united with Jesus, with his perfect life, his death, his resurrection for them personally. And so New Testament baptism really pictures that union with, that identification with Jesus, who lived a perfect life, he died a sacrificial death. He rose from death on our behalf. And so when we're water baptized, we're, we're simply publicly proclaiming what's already happened on the inside, the spirit baptism, that we have died to the old life, we've been raised with Christ to the new life, and that we're part of Jesus' new community, his new family called the church. So here's kind of a typical account of this from Acts chapter 16. You see a lot of them in Acts, verses 25 to 34. It says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were in prison. It's context. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. And when the jailer awoke, he saw that the prison doors were open. He drew his sword, was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. If you were a, ju uh, a jailer in that day, corrections officer, um, unlike the Bureau of Prisons or Olmstead County Jail, uh, if you let a prisoner go uh, in, those, in these days, Roman times, you had to fulfill the uh, penalty that they had. So... You let a prisoner go who had a death sentence, you were responsible to carry out that sentence with your own life. And so he's about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners must have surely escaped. And Paul cries out in a loud voice. He says, don't harm yourself. We're all here 
And the jailer called for the lights. He rushed in, trembling with fear. He fell down before Paul and Silas. And when he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's a great question. Listen to this great answer. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and also your household. And so they spoke the word of the Lord to him, to all who were in his house. And when he took them, the same hour of the night, to wash their wounds, he was baptized at once, he and all his family. And when he brought them up into his house, set food before them, and he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. So notice the order of events. They heard about the rescuer, Jesus. They trusted in the rescuer to save them personally, and then they were immersed or baptized into water. And so today we have six people who are already part of God's family through the Spirit's baptism when they ask Jesus to save and forgive them. Now they're going to follow the pattern by being baptized into water. And each is going to share their salvation story, and then they'll be baptized or dipped into water to show their connection, their union with Jesus and his death, his burial, his resurrection for them. That he now lives to save them. So the six who are being baptized today are Savannah House, Amy Holty, Kennedy Martin, Logan Rounds, Kurt Knodel, and Briella Satterblom. So we're going to come in that order. Savannah, I spoke with her before. She's ready to go. Savannah, and I'm eight years old. This is my testimony. Before I let Jesus into my heart, I felt scared of death, like I didn't know where I was going to go after I died. I grew up in a Christian family. I went to church, but didn't understand, but now I do. When I let Jesus into my heart, I was talking with my family about it, and I said I wanted to go to heaven, and then I let Jesus into my heart. Now I want to be baptized. I want to be with God forever. Now I know which, where I'm going to go. I'm not scared of death anymore. I want to tell the good news to the world. Good job. Good job. Hi, my name is Amy Holty, and I was raised at a Christian home where my parents took me to church in Awanas every week. At the age of eight or nine, oh, one sec, a night after church volleyball game, I asked my mom questions about how I could have eternal life. She helped me understand how Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that I have eternal life by trusting him as my savior. Through Sunday school service and youth group, I grew to under, in my understanding of Jesus. I have a learning disability my whole life, which have been made me very difficult from others who are smarter than me. 
A year ago, I went through a real hard time, was agitated and very discouraged. Jesus met me in that valley and showed me that no matter how much he loves me and that he's there for me, he will get me through. Today, I want to be baptized because I know that Jesus Christ is my Savior on the cross for my sin and see me through the end. Hi, my name is Kennedy Martin, and I'm 13 years old. I'm homeschooled, and I have four siblings. I've known who God is for as long as I can remember, and I asked Jesus into my heart at age seven. Part of the reason I want to be baptized today is because my faith has stood the test of time. It's been over five years since I first made that decision, and I've been exposed to new <laughs> ideas, beliefs, and values, but through it all, I have kept my faith in the one true God. When I was nine, my parents adopted two children from Costa Rica. Our family rhythms and schedule changed drastically from where everyone sits at the table to who uses which bathroom. But the only way I made it through that challenging time was the fact that God is and always will be there. Psalm 23, 4 states that you are with me, you rod and staff, they comfort me. It has been a difficult journey, but my siblings are some of my favorite people in the world and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I want to get baptized today because it is an expression of my faith and because it is something Jesus told us to do. I also believe we should be drawn to anything Christ himself did, and this is one way I can do that. One verse that is important to me is Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? I try to live out this verse every day of my life. I pray that I do better as a teenager and an adult, and that I do indeed act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. And being baptized is one way I can do that. Thank you. My name is Logan Rounds. I have always been raised in a Christian home, and my parents have taught me about Jesus for as long as I can remember. I prayed to ask Jesus into my heart when I was four years old, and since then I have learned more and more about, how God is, and about God and how much he loves me. One of my favorite Bible verses is Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through rivers they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not, oh, yeah. the flame shall not consume you. I love this verse because it reminds me that God is always with me, and I'm excited to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. So I'm Kurt Knodel, and I was uh, blessed to be born into a loving family, a church-going family. Uh, I grew up with plenty of love and affirmation. My parents, and I think even my siblings, would say I was a pretty good kid. And uh, I might have said the same, actually. Uh, in seventh grade, I attended our church youth group. It was led by a young married couple, some volunteers, Randy and Nancy McGuire. Uh, these volunteers God used to enlighten me to uh, my saving relationship with Jesus Christ. They encouraged us to read the Bible regularly, to pray regularly. Um, they taught us the gospel, explained it to us, that all have sinned and need a Savior, and that Jesus Christ is that Savior. They, uh, God showed me at that point the sin in my own life, the rebellion that was in my heart. Uh, that even though I was a pretty good kid, uh, and had had a great upbringing, I did need a Savior. In fact, that I was uh, far short of living to God's standards. And it was at this time that I asked Jesus into my heart. Uh, here's a passage that summarizes what Jesus has done for us and for me. Psalm 40, verses uh, 2 and 3. And I'm reading from a Bible that uh, Randy and Nancy gave to me. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. 
and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth and a song of praise to our God. A believer's baptism was not something that was practiced at the church that I was in when I grew up, and so I wasn't baptized at that time. And over the many years since then, I've occasionally thought about getting baptized. Um, and I just decided recently that I'm not just thinking about it, I really wanted to be baptized. So that's why I'm here today. Thanks. My name is Brielle Satterbloom. I was raised in a Christian family, and Calvary Free has been my home church about my entire life. I gave my life to Christ when I was six years old, and ever since I have believed that Jesus Christ is the one true God and that he sent his son to die on the cross for my sins. The path of following Jesus isn't always easy. Sometimes I felt out of place or that I just didn't belong. But through everything, I always knew that I could pray and talk to God whenever I want to. And he will always hear and be with me. One of my favorite songs for a long time is Behold Our God. The lines that stood out to me the most were, Who has numbered every grain of sand? Because that always reminds me how powerful he is and that he can do literally anything, even as big of a project as counting every single tiny grain of sand. The other line that stood out to me was more of a prayer, let your glory fill the earth, because that's something I desire to come true, and I find myself praying for that a lot. I have seen God through so many things, it's hard to count them all. One example is when I was seven, I really wanted a baby sister. I remember myself praying and praying for months. Anytime at church, I would take the opportunity and pray for a baby. My mom was helping prepare me for a no, but I just refused to let me. <laughs> but I just refused to let go of my dream and kept asking God. After at least a year of praying, my mom and dad told me the news that I, in fact, was going to have another sibling. So through that, I learned God can do anything on always response to my prayers. He said, he said yes to a baby and no to it being a sister. <laughs> that built up my faith because I believed God was listening even after years of praying. That he come, cares about every detail, even when he says no. I felt like I should get baptized now because I've been learning what baptism means, and I want to show that Jesus is Lord in my life. I tried for a while to ignore this feeling, mostly because I didn't want to stand up here and talk to you like I'm doing now. <laughs> but God kept pulling me toward him, and I finally decided that getting baptized was what I was being called to do. I always want him to be Lord in my life and to follow wherever he leads me. Great testimonies. Please, church, please stand and let's sing this final song together before we do the baptism.
Let's pray. Father, thank you for the testimonies of these six people you have called to yourself. You called them out of darkness into light. You've shown forth in their hearts. You've given them peace by covering over their sin with your blood, with your atoning work, with your salvation. You have set these individuals free and joined them to yourself in your church. Lord, praise God. Praise Christ for that sort of salvation, that hope and that peace that endures that amazing grace that does break the chain of canceled sin and sets us on a path to forgiveness, to be able to bring light into this world as long as you have us here, to know that for eternity we will be with you, praising you endlessly because you are the God and Savior of our lives. So thankful, Father, for what you've done in the hearts of these individuals. And we pray, Lord, that you would be glorified now as we partake in this institution of baptism that you gave to us to be able to uh, outwardly profess all that has happened in our hearts and our minds as you have done your work of making us new. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. You intend to live for him who died for you. In the profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? Do you intend to live for him who 
died for you. And the profession of faith. Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Son and the Holy Spirit. 